Right, should we go in my golf bag today? It's a new year. I haven't really played much this year with so much going on, but my bag has changed so much since last time we reported in. Why don't we take a look inside? Oh yeah, it's windy today. Get up. Why don't we see what trinkets I've got inside ready for this year? It's changed a lot, like I said. And also there's lots of things I think in my bag that might hopefully empower you to be a bit more confident with yours. But remember, this is my bag, it suits me. This is just for reference. You need to go and test the products that you wanna buy, go and try them out, see what suits you, those kind of ideas. Let's give you an idea what's in this bag. It's, oh, it's a funny one. So let's kick it off with putter to begin. It's just the classic Cleveland Huntington Beach soft premier four. So it has this like kind of softer, kind of milled face. It's always this classic shape that I kind of gravitate to. It's that kind of ping answer shape, isn't it? I just always end up going back to this. I like it in the black finish. I like the blacked out shaft and I really like the sharpness and the thinness of the grip. So what I mean by that is I really like the sharp angles of the grip, really allows me to feel control of the face to a certain extent through the sharpness and shape of that grip. So next up, my iron. So I use the ZX4. Now I've used these irons for quite a long time now and I put them in as a bit of an experiment really when new clubs come. I like to test, I like to play with them a bit and get the feeling and they've just stuck. So they're a hollow body, chunky, game improvement, strong lofted, iron i mean it, it's a game improvement iron but what i do like about them is that the top line is medium and the appearance is that as kind of slightly semi blady in their looks which i've kind of really grown to love to be fair cool it's so windy here today <laughs> stay left so six irons my longest iron before I go to the hybrids, which we'll talk about. And then I have in the ZX4 pitching wedge as my lowest iron, but I have another pitching wedge. Yep, I have two pitching wedges. And the reason being is they're strong lofted. If you use strong lofted irons, which I'm doing, then you're gonna have a bunch of either on all the other ends. You're gonna need a double up if you want a traditional. So I go ZX7 in a pitching wedge because this loft kind of works as like a gap wedge, basically. So I've got two pitching wedges, which is what's quite unique. But remember, there are only two pitching wedges by the fact they've got two P's written on the bottom. They're not the same club. And this one I've had in the ZX7, I've had it as the Fords, I've had it as a blade, but I've moved up to the ZX7 because I was just finding there was a bit of a feel gap between my chunky pitching wedge. So see how fat the sole of that is and the feel of strength of that and then the feel off the face to when I went to my bladed wedges, which we'll look at next because even my wedges have slightly developed and changed. NS Pro uh, stiff steel shaft, label still on, um, in the 950GH. Uh, to be honest with you, if they're regular or stiff, I honestly wouldn't care or feel the difference. Oh, just go. Front edge-ish, I reckon. So wedges, here's a change, here's a new club. So I've got the RTX, which I've had before. See how rusty mine goes, I love how rusty these go. I just like the look of it. This is the Zipcore RTX. So it's a 58 degree mid sole, little bit of relief at the back, 10 degree bounce. And it's a classic bladed, it's like my most lofted wedge. And I'm using this for my most lofted shots into greens, over things, lobbing up, pitching, chipping, trying to get the ball to stop panicking off a tight lie like this. Not a bad strike for me, that. But I would predominantly be here, be using more my 52 than my 58, where I've gone CBX2. So in my 52 degree, this one is 11 degree bounce. It's got, again, a very mid sole, so just the kind of ridge sole at the back. But this one looks, for all intents and purposes, from this direction, like all my other wedges, but it blends with feel, distance and sound more with my pitching wedge and my well, my two pitching wedges. And I do quite like the big sole. Comes in this dark finish is the one, it comes in other finishes, but that's what I'm using and I do really like the look of it. And that's much more the kind of shot I would play here. 
for this kind of running off this horrible winter grey English lies. So I'm using these two to really blend. I like the versatility of the sole and on the kind of thinner uh, leading edges on this one because this is a Torak wedge as well. See the T here, which basically gives it a slightly more relief on the front of this grind. It's a tall grind, which does make it the leading edge really sit close to the ground, making me feel if I want to get a real nippy one, which I don't very often because I'm not confident enough, I can do it. This is much more versatile for just playing a basic chip. And again, it blends for me much better up into my pitching wedge than chunky pitching wedge that would sit here. So there's my irons and my wedges. Do you reckon there might be another wedge in there? Or whatever we might call it, it might be a wedge or not. Not bad chips for me, that. So let's go into fairways and hybrids. So my free wood here, it's actually a 14 degree, but it's got 15 on it. It's a Launcher Turbo H. B. It's the older of the Cleveland. There's a newer one actually. I just really like the finish of this one. Wind off the left. <laughs> oh, get the other ball out. Oh, I've bulleted that. That's a lovely shot. It makes a lovely ding off the face. It's relatively strong. It's a really lovely flat flight. And off the tee, I feel I can get some low spinner bombers with this as well. This is one of those clubs that I just feel for the money, it's quite hilarious how good and similar to other products, if not exactly the same, that it performs and comes out. I, I love the looks. I like the way the ball is framed as well on top with the lines and the dropped off crown. It's just stealthy with a great combination. And this is what's important for me with a free wood from the ground performance and tee. Like if I just tee it up slightly high, get it a bit higher on the face, you do get it catching up close to the driver which I like and I can just put it on the ground it spins like 500 to 1000 revs more goes up in the air gets more floaty and I like that too because it then blends down with my hybrids so I've got a three plus in my stronger hybrid again this blends with my free wood really well this is the Cleveland Halo XL they call it a high wood and it's a really amazing club because it actually is so close in looking to a three wood so it's a very big headed hybrid which I really like and this is a common theme that you'll see in my bag and something I think lots of amateurs forget about is I'm not trying to just get gaps between clubs I want them to blend as well I want options on the course I I want this to catch up with my free wood if I really go for it, but I want it to also go back towards my other hybrid, which we'll show you in a second. It's the versatility always out of the clubs I'm looking for rather than just those top ends. This thing is a bomber. Again, I can float it. I can hit this up to 240, nearly 250, and I can bring it back to 200 if I want to really pat it. And here's my other hybrid, a 22, always a trusted kind of loft around 21, 22. You can see the size difference between the two. This is much more stepping up towards my fairway wood. This is the ZX Srixen hybrid, very basic in everything it presents. It's just really kind of sleek and pretty. No kind of smokes and mirrors, just a really nice looking and performing hybrid. Again, this one blends with my six iron. So my six iron is like a one, 185 to 200 at a push club. This is like a 190 going up to 230 at a push. So again, it's got that nice double overlap, which is something I'd really like you to try and work into your clubs as much as possible. And like I say, this just sits neutral, very easy looking, feeling, and kind of performing hybrid. Like this is a go-to club, always has been for me. I'd say this is the one that's been the bigger change to my hybrids because it's allowed me to have basically a more impressively strong hybrid where often my lower lofted hybrid, so this one is an 18 degree, can just be a bit too weak. It just is too similar to the 22 sometimes. Loving that one. Bonus club at the end, which might shock some people. I think some people obviously understand what it is from watching my videos, but if you haven't been following all my videos, which I understand, there's a lot of them. There's a bonus club at the end that might just shock a few people. Stay tuned for that. All right, driver Zexio X. Now I kind of flip between all the drivers within the brands I'm sponsored by, but this is the one I gravitate back to the most. 46 gram stiff shaft with counterbalancing is definitely something 
I kind of just keep returning to. It feels really light and I like that over time. I like that basically over the period of like a few days playing in a row or if we play over 18 on trips. It just allows me to feel like I can keep my speeds up. But there's always sacrifices in all equipment where it's light and great, it loses a bit in smash so I could use a heavier driver, swing it slow and get the same results. So it's a very feel based thing. What I find with this driver, so it's a lovely sound, it's got a titanium ting, that's an absolute bomb, is that I get my top end with it. So when I get to my max, it's often with this club. So what I mean by that is like my fastest ball speeds have come with that club or its predecessor. My fastest head speeds have come from this combination of light titanium light and lovely looking so it presents all neutral down by the ball it's again i like the, the this the, the kind of classic looks of it but it's all to do with the lightness of it that's what allows me as someone who's desperately chasing a little bit more speed like i say i just get my maxes out of this so that's why i tend to gravitate back to it but i'm sure you'll see me kind of chop and change between all of them as we go changeable neck on this one now but that just gets it back where my loft was on my old one anyway so it's pretty much the same club golf ball i'm a z star player anyone who sees my test i like the fact that it's not the highest spinning ball in the mid iron range good down at wedges and as good as all the balls really when it comes to driver but you can see i'm using the divide hard to get hold of but when i've got hold of these i will be playing this divide for me predominantly just because i think it's fun i like when we film that you can spot my ball on a green as we drive up to see who's furthest away or closest i quite like that because mine obviously stands out when someone else is using generally white balls in our group uh, if you're someone who uses a line say for your putting which i'm not but obviously if you use your line that thing is just fantastic for that and if you ever get it lying this way on the ground and when you chip with it you do see this kind of spinning action which is just quite nice and fun really i love those divide balls and I've, I've always been more z star than the others also i'm a shot scope watch kind of wearer. i like collecting my stats it's good for my coaching to give people comparables and it's good for my understanding of my game and i love the easiness of that front middle back yardage that it delivers i do also have a range finder as well for those situations where i just want to kind of play with guessing slope those kind of ideas i don't play in competition so i use it for slope again to help with students so I can call slopes for them a little easier it's a good thing to learn 150 into off the right and a little chippy eight iron we've got one more club the bonus club have you guessed what it is in those comments down below if not I think I'm going to blow your heads off with this one leave it win leave it win leave it win leave it win oh might need to hit a chip shot hey see what I've done there pretended I missed the green on purpose <laughs> <laughs> Did it close mark? Right, bonus club. Have you guessed it? Loads of you would have. I get it. If you've not followed all the videos, though, this one is going to shock a few people. I only really have 13 clubs in my bag, so I put a 14th in. And this is the 14th club because of reasons like that. I mean, that is basically from mud I've chipped there. And all I've tried to do is think about distance, which I've given myself seven out of 10 for. A little bit of a rough lie. Go, go, go. Oh, needle a little bit firmer there. So this is one of those experiments that's just gonna fall on its ass or might work. I don't know if this club will stay. Because I've got 14 clubs, I feel like this club can go in. Like that is a divot, mud, it's a bare patch of very wet winter grass. And this is the Cleveland Smart Soul Chipper. It's a chipper. It's 42 degrees. It's more upright in the way it sits. You can see it looks almost putter-esque. I can hold it, stand like a putter. That's what it looks like down at a dress. I can use a regular grip on my putting grip. And I can basically stand here and feel like I'm putting this but just move it out of the little rough area and try and run it down the slope. Look at that go. I mean, I'm barely even thinking about strike because with the way it lies and the way it basically sits and that fat sole, I mean, on even a lie like that, I'm not even brushing, like I'm not taking a divot or anything. No leading edge interaction. I mean, from that lie, that's not a bad shot. Come on, let's be silly. Like that's just, that's such a duff shot quite a long one so I'm going to use a standard grip literally just rocking back and forwards 
like, I've not hit enough of these. I am worrying about strike here, but I don't feel like I need to. I feel like I just need to go back and forth and try and judge some distance. I mean, like that is just crazy. Like you can see the interaction there with the ground is nothing. And it's certainly not my best ever chip, but from that lie, like pretty good. So I don't know if this will stay in the bag. It's definitely going in the bag because I've got room. I'm not sure I would ever take a club out to put it in. I don't know. And if I did, I don't know which one. People ask me, which club should I take out to put in? It's really impossible for me to answer that question, really, because I don't know how you use them all. I only have 13, so I can put this in and I'm going to play with it. And it's the kind of club I feel that if you give me enough time of it to practice, it's going to become like my 22 hybrid, just like an absolute favourite. But I have other ideas that concern me. You know, we play lots of stadium courses, built up greens. That's probably not going to work. So then I'm just carrying around a 14th club that I never really game. And I hate that. But I mean, generally we're in buggy, so I reckon I can drive it around. <laughs> so yeah, there's my bag. The chipper is in. <laughs> Two hybrids and a chipper. I am an absolute player, and I? Look, this is my bag. Again, you go and test. This doesn't mean you should have any of this stuff. It's got to suit your game. Hopefully my bag will give you a little bit of confidence to have confidence in playing what you want to play. So much ego related to golf bags and golf clubs. It's comedy. It has always made me laugh through my years of playing golf. Just get the job done. Get the ball in the hole. As small as shots, as the least amount of shots as possible. That's actually the objective here. Not trying to impress people by having certain clubs that you think should do what. Saying that, I've got strong lofted clubs just because I'm trying to hit it further than coach with my irons for fun. So we're all hypocrites, aren't we? <laughs> Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. As always, love you all. Good luck with your bags. Any questions, put them in the comments down below and I'll try and answer any bag-related questions.